It may not seem like it given recent major fires, but the risk of dying in a residential fire has sharply declined in the past 15 years. One of the reasons cited is the widespread use of flame retardants in household goods. As this side-by-side -side test shows, fabrics treated with flame retardant are less combustible, which is intended to give people crucial extra seconds to escape from a fire. But the use of flame retardants may have a larger hidden cost. Some of the chemicals used in the retardants pose health risks, particularly to firefighters. Those are the research findings of my next guest. Dr. Susan Shaw is the president of the Marine Environmental Research Institute in Beacon Hill, Maine. Welcome to you, Susan. Thank you for having me. Blue, Blue Hill. I said Beacon Hill. Blue Hill, Maine. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. We got all our hills <laughs> around here. Um, so, yeah, this comes as a, as a bit of a surprise because we knew that flame retardants were put in things like pajamas and that kind of thing because kids were getting burned, but they're in everything, even, even candy wrappers, you say. Mm. So this stuff is leaching into the environment. Is that the issue? Yeah, they're in everything. They're, uh, we're in, our homes are just uh, full of flame retardants. We flame retard foam uh, cushions, furniture, plastics, television sets. Almost everything in the kitchen is, is flame retarded, styrofoam, microwavable plastic. So throughout the home, we have flame retardant products. And, um, you know, we used to say that these, were, these chemicals were saving lives. And in fact, the research has shown, more recent research has shown, that the benefit of putting all these chemicals into our, our products mm -hmm. in the home is only a few seconds of escape time. In fact, three seconds. Really? And you have to weigh that against uh, a thousand times more uh, smoke, a uh, hundred times more soot, and so forth. I want to put up a little video. This was March in here in the back bay, um, and two firefighters sadly died in this uh, fire on Beacon Street. Not those firefighters, I should say, because the others were in the basement. But you look at that mm -hmm. smoke, and it's the whole building, right. you know, went up. What could those two fire three firefighters have done differently to? to not be exposed to, obviously they were probably exposed to some kind of flame retardants. Well, that's a very acute, uh, you know, um, very unusual exposure because it, something, some, someone on the backside of the building opened up a door and it, it just rushed yeah. through. But um, just everyday firefighting has become so toxic because of all the toxic chemicals that are going up in flames. and. And in addition, when those um, chemicals in the furniture are, start to burn, they're forming combustion byproducts, and those are dioxins and furans, which are carcinogenic. So, so do the do the uh, masks not protect them? The masks do protect them. The, it's called uh, it's a respiratory protection that um, you know it does something, but it doesn't protect them 100 mm -hmm. percent because of the the chemicals are now getting into the skin. And also, during heat, firefighters really get it coming and going. Not only are they going into this toxic soup now, uh, which wasn't the case before, but also in the presence of heat, the skin becomes more porous. So with an increase of 5 degrees temperature of the body, you have 400 percent increase in absorption mm. of chemicals through the skin. So are you advocating, uh, by the way, are these retardants dangerous? If they're not on fire, I mean, are you saying they just shouldn't be there, period? Well, they're dangerous. Uh, they're dangerous if they're not on fire. They're, even if they're not. Yeah. You were saying even seals have, seem to be picking right. up some of these. These are flame. getting into, yeah. right. The, 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 as with the wear and tear of furniture in the home, the flame retardant chemicals are, are released into the air and they get into dust. So all of us are exposed, average Americans are exposed to these compounds, but, uh, and they're getting into the mm -hmm. oceans. But um, firefighters are, have uh, exponentially sure. higher exposure. Well, is the Consumer Product Safety Commission onto this? I mean, are they making recommendations? There's a, a morass of um, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a government. morass of agency uh, efforts on this, and it would just be a long, long story. But uh, there's a, a kind of a battle going on about standards and mm -hmm. changing standards. Standards are, are are being changed in California. And that's one thing, but to what you have to realize is, in the home now, we still have this reservoir of all these mm -hmm. chemicals in, in our furniture. And so firefighters are at high risk for cancer because of this. 
firefighters are now, cancer is rising right. in the fire service and it's tragic. And it's multiple cancers, it's not one kind of cancer, it's digestive, respiratory, skin cancer, brain cancer, even in younger right. firefighters we're seeing these more aggressive cancers. All right, well that's fascinating research. Dr. Susan Shaw, thank you so much for coming.